Good morning. We made the crossing and we're out here on the South Jetty. We've got a plan today. We try to catch some live bait. Use that live bait. Go catch the lean cod. That's the plan, man. As you can see, it's a perfect foggy morning. It's about the uh, oh third day of summer, and that's what you get around here, especially if you get to the Los Osos side. Lots of fog. So, but fog is excellent for bites. We just hope it hangs out here for a while after I catch some live bait. But I don't have any live bait. I have some other rigs. I have some lures. We're going to go out to the end. I think I know right where to cast. And we're going to give it a try. Wish me luck. Got my beef stick. Big old giant reel. It's a 10,000. We just wanted to get the beef stick out there in case there's something big in the South Jay this morning. We'll let it sit there and uh, bait and wait while we catch a, a few jack smelt. And you can see we're using the uh, Sabike rig there. I think they call it a feather rig some other places. And that one's got number four hooks and I baited every one of them with a little bit of squid. Lots of birds this time of year, pelicans, cormorants. Heck, there's a big old peregrine falcon uh, nesting over by the rock. You ought to see that. So, <clears throat> typical for Jackie Smelt, I was getting lots and lots of bites, but I couldn't get them to commit. I finally put away the beef stick over there and decided just to concentrate on trying to catch a Jack Smelt. Oh, probably took, oh, not quite an hour, but a little while, and I finally managed to hook one. You notice I don't like run over and show it to the camera. I hold on to those things. They're small fish, but they put up a real nice fight. And they squirm, they can squirm Jackie right smell. out of your hand. So hold so on tight. About. Bong them early. Bonk them early. Oh, Jackie smelt. Nibble, 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 but I uh, didn't catch another one. Had to get moving. Okay, out here, South Jetty. I moved up to near the end of the South Jetty. Caught me a nice jack smelt. It's nice and fresh. You can see my nice setup. Got the weight in front. This hook is going to go right through here. So, treble hook. That one tough fish. Next time, we'll either chop that in like little pieces across or make about six long fillets like that. I think that fillet was too big. Let's do some cast. After about 15 minutes of using it like a jig, I decided to just go ahead and check it out, do a little bait and wait with it, and it wasn't long at all until I got my first bites. Little sucker dropped off right at the end, almost had it in there. Nice thing about that fresh jack smell, it really stays on the hook, you know, much nicer than squid. This was less than five minutes later, really biting out there today. Sadly, that one dropped off too. Had it like two thirds of the way in, then just popped off. Watch this bite. Figured I better check my bait after that big tug. 
It's all gone. Don't know what happened there. Load it way down. If you look real close, you can see that where the string is just bit through. Right, right there. 50 pound test. I think a shark took it. He's something big. Nick, we got shark. I made three or four of those rigs in the uh, number six hook and a treble hook on the bottom just, just in case we got some snags. Ready for the quick change. See, this is a much smaller piece, and I've got it hooked uh, with the with the point of the hook out and proud. So I think we'll do better here. That's why all those other other fish were just falling off. Cormorants are in town. They're all over by the rock too. Pretty cool. I'm using the, the big old 10-foot pole here because I was really hoping to get some long cast. I got this 10,000 reel and the braid lines all the way out to the edges, but I'm not getting any further cast than I do with my 8-foot pole. So there's something I'm doing wrong. If you got any suggestions, maybe a bigger weight to 3 ounce, let me know. The nice thing about the 10-foot pole is it helps you keep the... the uh, the line away from the, uh, the jetty so you don't get snags but this time I let it go too close in way too close in and sure as heck I got a snag pretty fast just had to break it off okay my uh, my three jack smelt rigs I've lost two now one was just a snag the second and the other one it had to be shark it was just such a bump it was gone <laughs> So I got one more try, at least with the jack smelt. And after that, I think we'll try to catch some brown rockfish with, uh, with just the uh, squeeze, nice squeeze. Last try. Okay. Yeah. All we got left is that nice fish head right there from our jack smelt. So let's give this a try. Try a palooza. This wasn't a real big uh, hit, a bite. It, it kind of just snuck on my line. It was kind of weird when I was. I might have, might have hit me when I was reeling it in. I'm not sure. But first fish. That is a nice brown. Check it out. I love it. Not a link cod, but I'm taking that bugger home. <laughs> I hooked that jack smelt ahead right through the nose, so the the, uh, the hook was really exposed, and the fish was uh, caught perfectly, hooked perfectly. I bonked them, I bleed them, cause I'm gonna eat them. There wasn't any big puddles out there, so I had to use my drinking water to get them uh, all washed out. That, that's a nice sized brown rockfish. So I don't know if that's related to fishing with fresh bait or not, but we'll see. Little brownie, very nice, going home, all bled out. I got some ice in there, gonna put that fish on. Then we'll freshen up our bait here with, that's a little bit of halibut juice. Halibut juice. This is a good cast, but it's not going near as far as what I thought it would be cast. This is only about five minutes later.
That another fish dropped off. That was a gopher too. I was hoping for a multi-species day. I think we'll add a nice piece of squid to the whole thing. Then we gotta get getting out of here. That don't work, but I think that'll work. Check it out. There you go. Now at this point, I, I kind of think I know where they're they're flocking out there, so I'm casted into the same spot. That's pretty typical for the jetty. You find the spot. Same thing on the north jetty when you get out there. Got him hooked, reeled in a little bit. He dove for the hole. It's going to be like, we have to play the long game here. I know he's on there, so you just have to relax the line, and let him sit. It usually takes a few minutes, and he'll come popping out if you're, if you're patient. Every now and then, he gives me a little wiggle just to let me know he's still on there. This was a particularly long and patient wait, so I, I sped it up, because it was over five minutes waiting for this fish. Then finally he shifted or something, but I pulled him up and over the rock and we're reeling him in. Let's see what it could be. Another brownie, you know, I thought, thought I had something big down there. That thing hit hard. <laughs> I catch this nice fish, but I'm telling a, a one that got away story. <laughs> That's a fisherman. <laughs> I thought that was something big. I know, I'm not sure if that's the original fish. That was a big old hit. That was a big bite. That was a huge bite. I'm not quite sure. But that's the fish that was originally got uh, got it. Anyway, we're going to do it one more time, then we're going to get out of here. Well, I got all the fish I'm going to take home, unless, of course, we catch a big old ink cod here. Take that thing home, give it a nice, tasty try, make some fish tacos. I think I'm doing fish tacos no matter what we're taking home. I caught this fish literally two, three minutes after uh, casting out. Maybe a, a jack smelt sense getting out there, the halibut juice, not sure. Yeah, and of course I told you, I know where they are at this point. Hooked perfectly. Well, I kind of set it there and it gets too far in again and gets caught up on the rock, so I'm going to break it, break it off and call it a day. It was an amazing day of fishing. Probably all thanks to catching that fresh jack smell. I have to do that again and catch a couple more. But I'd make the chunks a little smaller this time. I, I didn't get that lean cod, but I think I'm uh, one step closer using the live bait out there. Maybe next time. Gonna wrap it up here at the South Jetty. Caught three brown rockfish, didn't get my link cod, but uh, they sure like that jack smell. I got some really big bites on that. Uh, I also think a shark took one, which is the hook and line was gone. It was a little tight, so he just must have cut it. 
So yep, going to go head back over, jump into kayak, and uh, well first we're going to stop and play these, so let's do that. Well that was a heck of a lot of action. I don't think I've had a day that good on the South Jetty in a, in a couple years. And uh, you know, maybe it's just because there's a lot of fish out there, but maybe it's because I was using fresh bait. So I know a couple places where they always seem to have jack smelt, so I'm always going to try and uh, stop and catch the uh, catch them anytime I go out now. Uh, I, I was going to use a bobber on that, so I'm going to try that next time, about six foot up, see if that helps me catch a few more of them, because it took a while just to catch one. But yeah, fresh bait, that's, but wow, amazing. I got four real nice flays. Now they have seagulls, they're going to get the carcass, I'm going to put it over there. Take those flays out there, give them a rinse all the sand off, put them in a bag, put them back on ice, and head back over to the truck, head on home, make some food. So we kind of had a hankering for some fish tacos, and there's that brown uh, rockfish I caught. We're going to slice that up into uh, half inch strips. And we're going to season them uh, pretty lightly. Usually I like to go with the egg wash and, you know, with a double bath and everything. But this time we're just going to do a seasoning and a little flour. That looks perfect. Put them on in a bowl. Get seasoning. That's a little black pepper. And we're going to put a little salt. And today I'm trying some... Uh, lemon pepper season at the McCormick's and it, it tastes it's really good and that's about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of flour just to kind of get everything to adhere nicely we're going to set that aside to hydrate a little bit and we're going to fry up our tortillas so just put a little bit of oil in the pan and then when it gets hot put a couple corn tortillas in there that's you know I've for fish tacos, I think it's corn tortillas, and uh, we're gonna fry them until they get a, a little bit of color on the uh, on the inside, yeah, on each side. It's kind of amazing how much these will shrink, so much smaller they are already. So yeah, we just keep on frying until we get a nice brown like that, brown and crispy. And uh, I like to put a little cheese on there before I pull them out. I'm gonna set these aside a little bit and uh, uh, fry up my fish for them. So. I want that cheese just to melt a little bit. It's going to add some nice buttery flavor. Or you could just fry in butter, but I don't usually. So that's our fish chunks there, all seasoned. And you can kind of tell that the, uh, the flour is melted into the uh, skin a little bit. That's going to help it uh, give you some nice crispy bits. And, and it's only going to take about two or three minutes to fry them up. I just put in a little bit of chili powder. Check the inside. 145. They're ready to go. This was one of those occasions where I did the seasoning and the cooking just perfectly. That fish was really good just by itself. Before I made it in the tacos with a little bit of cabbage, and that's uh, some nice carrot strips just to use your peeler to make those. That's a little basil out of my garden, and some mayonnaise and hot sauce. I like pepper plant sauce. I think it needed to be a little more spicier, so I put some more pepper plant sauce on it. And a nice lemon from my garden. And just gonna make this thing absolutely beautiful. And I gotta say, it was so tasty. <clears throat> okay, got to get out, do a little surfing on my new board. Here's my first wave on my new board. It's a nose rider. I don't remember the brand, but it was uh, it was cheap. Like I like all my boards. Also a 10-2. My last one was 11 foot board. I I like. I'm a bigger guy, so it's easy for me to catch waves. Oh, and there's the cormorants on the rock I was telling you about. So yeah, this new board is uh, much faster than my last board. It's actually the fastest board I've had probably in a decade. Really nice. Got it down at the local surf shop. I think it was called Joe's. And you can kind of see, look at this wave. It's almost just barreled right there. And really fast wave. That was fun. And, and the waves had, had power that day. So yeah, this was the uh, first three waves on my uh, new board, and uh, this one's almost exactly like the last one. It, that's bigger than you realize, actually, but it did kind of break. I caught the reform and was zipping on down there. This is a very fast, fun wave. And then right at the end, uh, when I land, I end up uh, landing back on my board and it kind of hurting my ribs. You, you can kind of tell. I'll show you when I get out of the water. But yeah, this dismount. Uh, kind of rolled me back over onto my board somehow. 
I think I cracked my rib a little bit, but I'm okay. Yeah, it felt like somebody punched me. Like, look at this. I'm like, oh my god! I was stupid enough to go back out for another wave. I, I, I turned the back around because my, yeah, you know, my ribs started hurting. So that was the end of that. We're out of the ocean here for a few weeks. Do me a favor and subscribe and like this video.